Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Enter the fullness of blessings is the title of this devotion. You know, it's, it's, it is something you enter. It is not just something you have to kind of wait for. No, it's all ready for you. It's all here. It's all now. Yes, I agree, and we'll talk about this, that there is a joy set before us. There is a glory of the place prepared for us in heaven with Jesus in the place where there's no tears, no crying, no sighing, no dying. Oh, glory, glory, we have this hope, and I'm gonna talk about it with you this week, that that is set before us. But today, I want you to realize that you can enter and keep entering and keep entering and become so at home in the blessings, the fullness of blessings, it becomes so real to you. It becomes so forcefully powerful through faith in the Holy Spirit, in the Word, in you, that you for nothing will come out. You will not come out. No, nope, you live in it. And I know when we're young Christians, we don't even know how to enter. We don't even know that it's there for us. We can't spiritually perceive it. We don't know how to recognize it. And we, have, we need that constant encouragement. But as we come into communion with the Father through His Son, by the power of His life-giving Spirit in us, we begin to enter, and when we're in it, oh, we feel heaven, heaven's holy life, heavenly life, sinless life, manifesting in us in which we are perfect and complete before the Father without blame or shame in His presence, without any intimidation of the forces of darkness in this world in total joy and it's so real but then we go back out again and we can feel so defeated and so earthly and so weak by our flesh nature and we can't see it anymore and we think oh god left me oh i used to be so anointed and we have all these different ways of thinking that is all blockades on the way of human minds and human feelings and sometimes wrong teachings and then and then we have to come through it and we enter again and oh glory oh thank you lord for restoring and reviving and renewing me and but we want to come into such a place that we enter no more go out again. So anyway, today, look at it. Enter the fullness of blessings is the title of this devotion. Jesus said here in John chapter 1 verse 16, or it is written here in John chapter 1 verse 16, and of his fullness, Christ's fullness, we've all received grace for grace. The classic Amplified says that verse this way. Out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gifts of his fullness. This is the power of the Christian life. You see, if all we know is that the cross was there where he was crucified for our offenses, we can find through that gospel the victory over guilt and condemnation because Jesus paid for it all. But he didn't just pay for bringing us out of the force and control of sin and death, but to bring us in. The Bible says he brought them out of the land of bondage to bring them into the land of promise. God brings us out of that which is dark and sinful to bring us into that which is light and knows no sin or condemnation. You see, it's being, be entering into the fullness of the blessing is entering into the life Jesus now has with the Father in heaven that he gives in to us. Jesus said in John 16, I have so much more to share with you, but you cannot bear it now. But when the Holy Spirit comes, 
He will take of what is mine and unveil, reveal it in you. And when I say he will take of what is mine, all that is the Father's is mine. Therefore I said he will take of what's mine. In other words, he will take of what I have in heaven with the Father and reveal it in you. John 16, verse 14 and 15. And friends, it says here in Ephesians chapter 1, right? Oh, how good it is when we begin to grasp this by faith and through the Holy Spirit. Verse 3 of Ephesians 1, Blessed be the God and Father, praise and glory and laudation be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Everything Christ has in heaven is what pleases God to bless us with here in earth, that we are the witnesses or the embodiment of the glory of heaven, that heaven and earth now are connected, reconciled, that the barrier of sinful nature is broken through the life of the Son of God in us, that heaven and earth are reconciled and the barrier of the sin nature in the flesh is broken through the life of the Son of God we have in this earthen treasure, earthen vessel. And he says, Blessed be the God, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in every place in Christ. Listen now. He begins to talk about the blessing. Just as he chose us in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame in, 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 before him in love. That I pray all the time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that I'm holy and without blame before you in your love. Oh, your love, my Father, is so good. I love living in this conscious knowledge of your holiness. In this conscious knowledge, there is no charge against me. I am without guilt before you. Oh, hallelujah. It is without blame. There's no charge against me. Hallelujah. I pray this all the time. Next, he says, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You see, this is unspeakable riches of glory that we who are Gentiles are now partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light, Colossians 1.12. We who are Gentiles, we who by nature were aliens and strangers from the commonwealth of Israel, it talks about in Ephesians, now share in all the blessings that God promised to give to the seed of Abraham. We now have become partakers of these blessings. That's like a father who has trillions uh, uh, to give to his son, and he gives it to his son, and his son is the only heir of the father. And that because we have become one with the son, we share in all that wealth. We who have never been a son, we who had never deserved to be part of that, we who didn't have the promise, now become partakers of it because of the son. I mean, folks, come on, there is more here to be thought of than we could imagine with our natural mind. We need the Holy Ghost to help us grasp this because it's so phenomenal. And then he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he, the Father, has made us accepted in the Beloved, because in him we now have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. You begin to meditate on these kinds of thoughts, folks. You begin to meditate on it, and you begin to realize there are blessings that I receive from the Father through the Son, that are more than my natural puny little mind can comprehend. If it weren't for the Holy Spirit opening my understanding, illuminating me inwardly to these blessings, I would be a stranger to it even though they're mine. I would be an alien to it even though they're mine. And friends, God doesn't want you to live as a stranger or an alien before Him. He wants you to live before Him as a son. So come on, think about this for a moment. In Acts chapter 2, verse 33, the Apostle Peter is preaching and he says, Therefore, 
being exalted to the right hand of God, talking about Jesus, or let me start in verse 32, this Jesus, God has raised up of which we are witnesses and being exalted to the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. So this is so vital. It says in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, all God's promise is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So all the promises, yep, and we now, in living experience of these promise, say, Amen, it is so, it is so. All that God promised in His Word becomes a living experience in Jesus. All God's promise. You could take any promise of God's Word, by His stripes you are healed, who forgiveth all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. You can take these promises and you can begin to live in them through Jesus Christ. They become a living experience in your spirit, soul, and body through the Lord Jesus Christ, you see. It is so wonderful. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of sonship, was promised us throughout scriptures. Waters will spring forth out of your inmost being. With joy you will draw from the well of salvation. Living waters in the wilderness, all these promises are there in the scriptures, in, in, in Isaiah 12 and many other places. And here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14, it says, well, let's start, uh, read the last part. The Holy Spirit of promise, last part of verse 13, uh, go ahead and re read verse 13. In Him, you also trusted, in Christ, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, in Jesus, whom also you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you and me who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ are now sealed, marked as belonging to God by the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the full redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. So we now listen. We now have the Holy Spirit in us as a down payment, Romans says and as a seal, as a mark of ownership. It marks us as belonging to God. That spirit of life in Christ, the spirit of the Father, the Holy Spirit of promise, is the spirit of adoption by which we cry up a Father. It is the spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. If you have not the Holy Spirit of Christ in you, giving you new birth into fellowship with the Father through the life of the Son in you, you are not His, Romans 8 says. But you are His because you have this new birth. Oh, how I long to talk to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit next week. But listen, you have this new birth in you. You have this marvelous new life in you, the life of the Son of God in you, the Holy Spirit bearing witness of Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have this in you, and this is a mark of ownership. It is the seal of ownership, and it is the guarantee. It is the guarantee of what awaits you. You see, in 1 Peter, oh, how I love these thoughts. In 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, Blessed be the God and Father, verse 3, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again, brought us forth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are being kept by the power of God unto salvation, ready to be revealed to the last day. So, through this resurrection life of the Son of God in us, friends, we have this guarantee, this seal of ownership, this, this deep sense that we are heirs together with Christ. That the inheritance of 
everything he is as the Son of God, everything he has as the, everything he is and has as the Son of God, as the perfect embodiment of the Father. He is God, he is eternal life, 1 John 5, 20. And that inheritance, that fullness of glory, that perfection of sinlessness, that perfection of holiness, that perfection of the spirit of sonship, that eternal spirit of perfect righteousness, peace and joy, that glorious inheritance of his life in the Father and the Father in him, in him is what we are now experiencing by the Holy Spirit. And it is a guarantee that it is already ours. It's already ours. And it is a power by which we are kept for its coming revelation when Jesus appears. And so I close with this thought from Second Th Thessalonians. Uh, where are you? It's before Timothy, it's Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verse 10. Listen, when he comes, when Jesus comes, in that day to be glorified in his saints, to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. So, listen to this in closing. The fullness of blessing. We already have it all. And even though we experience it by the Holy Spirit in us in increasing measures and we become more and more radiant with His indwelling holy life, with His transforming nature, with His conforming forces and powers, making us like Him consistently. And yet we feel sometimes still so earthly. We know, we know we have this. We have this blessed assurance. It's more real than anything that can be seen that's temporary because the eternal weight of glory is so strong inside of us. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, 18, that we have this expectancy that's beyond measure, knowing that when we see Jesus in the twinkling of an eye, first Corinthians 15, we will see him in the twinkling of an eye of seeing him. We who have his life like a mirror in us will reflect the glory of his life and will be made perfect in his likeness in the twinkling of an eye. The moment we see him, his life in us will mirror, reflect first, uh, first, um, second Corinthians 3 verse 17 18, will mirror his glory and we will be made perfect in his likeness as he presents us to the Father, holy and without blame in his sight, perfect, perfect to the praise and the glory of his grace. Friends, the fullness of blessing is so unfathomably marvelous and wonderful. And yet Paul in Ephesians 3 verse 8 says, I, I who am the least of all these saints has been given this grace to make known the unsearchable riches of Christ. Don't ever count yourself out. Don't ever say, oh, well, Pastor Robert, I know, I know I'm just, uh, I have a lot of issues, you know, Pastor. So I, I can't, can't see how God can use me for this. Or like this Catholic lady who was a practicing Catholic, she was feeling the presence of God so strong. She was sitting next to me. I looked at her, I said, do you feel this? She said, yes, I do. I said, it's for you. She said, oh no, I'm not a priest like you. You're a priest. I said, no, my dear lady, Jesus Christ is equally available to us all. And friends, there's a lot of people. They don't know how to enter the fullness of the blessing. And maybe because of some teaching that wasn't helpful. Or maybe because they're so blinded by their own failings and they need to have their eyes open that for that very purpose, Jesus died to loose you from the grip of those failings and bring you into the joy, help you to enter into the joy of the fullness of his blessings. Friends, it's so important, you and I are unashamed witnesses of his blessings and love in our lives and that people can look at us, <clears throat> especially in the trying times of life, and say, you know, when I look at you, I don't know, it's like you're radiant, it's like you're shining, what is that? You say, it's Jesus. He 
at Jesus. I was ministering in the church and the presence of Jesus was so powerful. And this one man, he said to me, what is that? What is that? I said, it's Jesus. That's what you see. We are his body and he's equally available to us all. Folks, I don't want to just enter in and let others stay outside. No, I want to take as many with me as I can into all the fullness of blessings the Father gives us in Jesus. Amen. Have a good day.